lounging, son. All right, welcome back to the Comic College. My name is Ryan, and back with me again, one of my favorite cartoonists. I got Mr. Tom Scioli back. Super stoked to have you back on the show, man. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited to talk about I Am Stan. I love. I mean, I think the last time we talked was with the Kirby book w- uh, launched. Mm-hmm. You've been busy since then, and you know, I, I follow your Patreon and stuff like that. So, like, you do a lot of awesome stuff there, releasing your art there. But you, for the longest time, weren't talking about any project you were doing. So, can we talk a little bit about you know how you went from doing the Kirby book and now doing a Stan Lee book? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that was, um, I mean, it was kind of the natural next step, sure. uh, you know, that, that you know, if if uh, people want to read a, a graphic novel about the life of Jack Kirby, then they'd probably be even more inclined to read about Stan Lee, because Jack, Jack Kirby is a little more of a tough sell. He's, and also kind of maybe a discovery for a lot of the a lot of the people, you know, reading that book, you know, maybe they've heard about him, but didn't know much about him. Where Stan, it's kind of coming from the opposite direction. He's uh, everywhere, you know, he, you know, he's um, so well known, you know, it's, it's, you know, here's, here's a book about, you know, this, this person that's uh, probably been a part of a lot of people's lives. Yeah, I mean, and they knew it. Unlike, unlike Jack Kirby, where he's yeah. a part of your life, but you're maybe not aware of, of that or to what degree. Man, it's been so long. I can't remember if I mentioned this, but like, yeah, I think like most kids growing up, you just automatically like, oh, Stan Lee created that, you know, because like, you don't know, he's the face of Marvel Comics. I mean, even, I mean, I don't know when they stopped, but Stan Lee presents even when he was long gone from writing comics was still all over the comic book. So, you know, obviously, I think maybe it's funny that you say that because like, for comic book fans, I think Jack Kirby was like, the one that people would be more excited about. But I think the Stan Lee maybe is you're going to hit a lot more different people because more people know who Stan Lee is. So it's like, like you said, it's not as hard of a sell. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you, because there is so much more of Stan, like was that almost an easier process of creating the book in terms of like this, I don't want to call it story because you're telling his story, but it, it had to have been a little bit of a different process, right? Like compiling this stuff. Yeah, there's just, I mean, for one th- thing, it's just a longer life. You know, okay. there's more ground to cover. He, mm-hmm. um, you know, Kirby's, th- their stories begin around the same time. I mean, Jack Kirby's older, but he's not that much older than Stan. Uh, but then, you know, Kirby's story ends in the early 90s. And then Stan's just keeps going and going and going. So, so yeah, it was a, a whole lot of ground to cover and yeah, there was just um, access to much more material. I mean, Stan Lee for a comic book person is like really well documented. Like there isn't there isn't any anybody else in in comics I could think of. You know, at at, at least from his generation, where there's just that that much to draw on. You know, it, it's for for some of these guys, it's like a couple of still pictures from like you know when they were twenty. And then that, that's it, you know, but Stan, he, he, you know, it was, uh, you know, part of his mission in life. It was a very deliberate decision to be front and center, uh, you know, get out there, be uh, listened to in, you know, public speaking, be recorded, you know, for radio, for television, you know, and then eventually for movies. I mean, a book came out, you, you cited in the back. Um, I think it's the one by uh, Reisman that came out. Mm-hmm. what it came out like a year and a half ago Some, something like it's very recent yeah and <laughs> i don't want to say it's like a dark look at stan but it's a look at stanley that like i hadn't read prior to that and i think that you kind of cover that ground but you don't it's not very prevalent you know like you do it very subtly in the book you know the, the, towards yeah, I mean, the, it's part, the it's part of, of the story yeah yeah and that that book i i think because of where that book came from uh that the 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 reporting that like uh Reisman had had done sort of began with those last days of of Kirby they did mm-hmm. some stories about uh I think for Vice maybe uh, not the last days of Kirby I mean the last days of Stan there were a lot of stories about like 
the last days of Stan. And uh, that was kind of the focus. And so that was sort of like the, almost the starting point, I would I would imagine, like, or, or the, the focal point of interest where that author was coming from in terms of Stan Lee. And so, of course, it's going to affect the rest of the book if, if your starting point is... Uh, this, you know, very, very dark and troubling chapter of, of Stan's life. And I, I mean, mine has elements of that. And I think that actually is a very important part of Stan's life. And, 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 and you know, a, a very, uh, you know, you can't really view Stan's life without that lens. But uh, just, just for me personally, and where I'm coming from, just in terms of my history with the material and with Stan, it's much more of like a long ranged, you know, view of just like comics history and, and, and Stan's role in that. Sure. And I mean, look, I mean, everybody, anybody that is a fan of your work knows your love for Jack Kirby. Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's like knows no bounds. How do you, how do you approach I mean, like, I don't, I guess I've never really asked you this, but I mean, it, people can be very divisive with their feelings towards Stan, especially like, you know, with, all the facts becoming more known. And I mean, even the Kirby estate has been very upset with this new Stanley documentary that just came out. But I guess what is kind of your perception of, I mean, I guess based on the book, like, I mean, you definitely have a love for Stan too. And I think it's important to note, you know, I'm not trying to say anything bad about Stan. I mean, he has his place in comic book history. Comic books would not be the same without him. Right. But there is some stuff that he's done. That's, you know, questionable in terms of like character and, that is addressed, but what are your feelings about Stan? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've i been on sort of like a similar journey to, I think, a lot of people. And, and uh, you know, like a, a, a book like mine might be for some people, I mean, because Stan's got such a huge, uh, you know, footprint. It, it might be the first encounter for some people of like any kind of, you know, controversy regarding Stan. It's like, wh what are you talking about? That, that uh, you know, a cute little old man that shows up in the Marvel movies, you're telling me that, you know, what, there's something bad about him? You know, like, it, it, I think it is like as shocking as it is to people who are like well-versed in comics, I think it's going to be news to some people. But yeah, I mean, I've been through that whole journey with Stan and it's just kind of like this lifelong journey and, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of time to kind of think about him uh, just just throughout my life, because, I mean, what you know, what's my first encounter with Stan? My first encounter with Stan is, you know, most likely those uh, cartoons of the early 80s where he's the narrator. And it, and it is like you say, you, you, you just accept him as like, oh, this is not even like, oh, this is the author of this stuff. This is the author of Marvel. But this this guy's like the embodiment of Marvel, like this, the same way it's like Rod Serling on the Twilight Zone, like Rod Serling, you know, uh, you know, was very, you know, highly involved in the Twilight Zone in the creation of it. And the, but he didn't write every episode. I don't think he directed any episodes, but it's still like he's the living embodiment of the Twilight Zone when it's like, OK, who do I thank for the Twilight Zone? It's it's Rod Serling. And so the impression we had is like, who do we think, whose hand do we shake for the Marvel universe? And it's Stan. And then again, this, I don't think this is uh, uh, that uncommon, but I got a little bit older, learned a little bit more. And it's like, wait a second. And, you know, and, and, and then that feeling of uh, maybe like a little bit of betrayal that, yeah. uh, that, you know, why didn't anybody tell me about all this other stuff, you know, and then, and then having a bunch of time to sort of sit with that too. So just, um, you know, it's it's been a lot of years and I've had a lot of time to contemplate a lot of this stuff. And then also just, you know, the, the pandemic and everything. This is this is a post pandemic project. So, you know, it kind of puts everything in perspective and you can sort of view somebody's like I, I, I feel like I'm at a place where I can view somebody's life with like warts and all and and accept it and not necessarily pass any judgment and just, and and be honest about it too. Like it doesn't, and and I feel like that that attitude of like, you know, team Jack or team Stan or like some kind of like antagonism or, or some, it, it just, um, I, I just can't relate to that kind of thinking at, at, and definitely not at this point in my life. 
Sure. Yeah. You when you mentioned the word betrayal, I think that that mm -hmm. was definitely how I felt. You know, because like as a kid, you know, like I I too probably it was the cartoons. I think you know watching reruns, and then even I think he did the nineties. I mean, cartoon nineties Spider Man. He was a part yeah. of that as well. Oh, the whole other yeah. Once I heard it, once somebody told me something bad about Sam, I was like, don't say that. You know, like you're wrong. You know, <laughs> and then and then hearing more about it, then I you know for a little while I was like I was pretty upset. You know, and then he passed, and then I was like, oh man, like. Then I started reflecting on that and, you know, like, obviously, like, I read the other book, you know, the the one that Reisman did, I read that and, like, at times you feel sad for him. And even in your book, like, you, you do it in a way that, like, he does some scummy things, you know, and he, I mean, that's just the nature of human beings, I think. We're not perfect, we're all flawed, and you capture that, you capture all aspects of Stan's persona very well. But yeah, he's flawed and he's he's also he hurts, you know, like he's like any of us. I mean, I think the way you should when he's losing his hair, I think is was something that really, <laughs> really stood out to me because like you see it. And then like then he, all of a sudden he's got this like because people say all the time, like, why all of a sudden he was balding? Now this dude's got a full head of hair, you know, like so it's just like very conscious of his own persona that he put out to the world and then how he felt about himself, you know, I think was kind of helped me. I don't want to say heal, but made my feelings towards him heal a little bit, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was like that for me to, a you, you can't do an entire book about somebody, like no matter what your intent is, if you set out to do a certain kind of book about somebody, um, you spend that much time in their shoes. Like if you, if you really do your job, right. You're it, it I, it's really hard to come out the other end, not having just like incredible, empathy for that that person yeah the, i want to mention to um before we get more into the book uh you have an opening page right before it's right before like you know the the title and it hit mm -hmm. me very hard which is which is this where like he's signing right. and they're telling him yeah <laughs> that was my experience my one and only experience meeting stan lee was that experience was me waiting in this line one of those. at LA Comic Con, spending 120 bucks to to get a signature because I just wanted to meet him once and didn't look up once. And they just it was like a conveyor belt of them handing him mm -hmm. stuff and telling him how to spell. And it's just so sad, you know. And just it made me sad being that like not in a selfish way of like oh man I that's I paid this money and that's what I got. Like it, it wasn't that. It was just like man, he doesn't even look happy here. It's like they're just trying to make money off him. So when I saw that as the opening page for the book, it just like, it hit me right in the gut. And I think that that was such a, such a good, like, you know, cold start to the book that, that you, I just wanted to call that out. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, that, that, it, that was a big part of me, like even wanting to do this book in the first place. Like that is like talking about empathy. It's like, how can you really have any kind of like strong, angry feelings towards Stan Lee after you see something like that? It's uh, and, and that that being almost, you know, sort of like a natural consequence of some of the, the choices and, and, and like where you would end up in your life if you do chase some form of like fame and turning turning your face into an icon, turning your face into a mask. So that was like that was an important like you know, everybody saw that the videos that were circulating and things. And it's kind of like uh, the Stan Lee story is a very different story af after that. And so your approach to this, as opposed to, you know, like Kirby, like I, I know like Kirby probably, I don't want to say it was more work, but like you said, there's not as much with him. There's not as, like a bunch of interviews. Stan, like you can, you can Google, you've spent days looking through interviews that yeah. he's done. You know, there's books, there's all, all sorts of stuff, videos. What was your goal when you were going to put this together since the story is so much more widely known? I mean, you are building a story. So like, how do you choose what mm -hmm. to include and what not to include when you're forming this type of type of book? Well, I mean, fortunately, like there's no way around it when you're making when you're making a book, you know, or graphic novel or you know, graphic biography, whatever you want to call it. You have a lot of time to sit with this stuff so you can, kind of, you know. Um, in the making of it, things sort of occur uh, occur to you like, oh, you know, this, I need to include this. And then 
you find a place for that. Like it's it's a much this like slow process of of, of things unfurling. So going in, I knew uh, I knew I was going to have a lot of ground to cover. I had a lot of you know uh, keystones and bullet points and things where it's like, okay, I got to make sure to mention this. Got to make sure to mention this. And then yeah, just the process of making it kind of uh, you know like a tree growing or something. The, the you know other things start kind of forming like in the spaces in between but no it was tough and i i just i wanted to just convey a sense of stan and who he is like the, this and the jack kirby book are for as as similar as their subject matter is they're very different books and very different approaches and just like you know i i found a way to get in an entrance into Jack Kirby's world. And then I wanted, you know, an entrance into, into Stan Lee's world and his world is very, um, uh, quick moving, very, uh, you know, funny, very agile, very, uh, and, and very, um, you know, concerned with sort of like a surface reality and how you present yourself. And, and, and it, you know, just, it, 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 I, I wanted a book that like was Stan Lee, like like you, you're getting like like an embodiment of 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 who he is and, and and what I see him to be. And I knew like with with Jack Kirby, I knew like there's certain parts of his story that are going to sort of stand out and, and they're going to have an effect on the reader. And I and one of those just sort of being his war service that like Jack Kirby is like it's OK, here's the story of a guy learning how to draw and, and, and making comics and things. And then all of a sudden he's on a boat. He's in uh, Europe, it's World War II, the bullets are flying and it's like, oh, this is a very different story than, than is, is typical for this sort of thing. And with Stan, it was like, okay, we are going to start with this sort of like precocious child narrative, this story of, uh, you know, like this plucky kid, smart aleck, uh, you know, funny, handsome, you know, and, 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 and we're gonna watch that sort of, you know, turn into to something else, you know, and, and some of those elements like, you know, remain all the way through. Some of them change into other things, some of them go away, but that, that was going to be, um, you know, that, that to me was like a, like a big, a big part of like what this journey was going to be. Like, you know, these, these life stories, it's almost like within, again, because it's somebody's real life, just within the stories, it almost like changes genres. Like if you made a movie, if this were a fictional story, you might have a movie about a plucky kid and then that's that's the arc of it or you might have a movie about uh you know like like a, a sad old man or you know whatever not not that stan was was necessarily a, a sad old man but but like to have a story that you know goes through that you know full range it's it's only in o only in biography only in in you know somebody's actual life that you really get that scope typically I love, I, like, I love the Curry book. I love this. Like, I love stuff about, or I love books in general or media that's based on on true events. Like, there's just something. There's an added element that just you're like, oh my god, like this, this, this happened to this person. Like, it just to me, it's more exciting. Um, I, I do want to, <laughs> I do notice I, it's not narrated by Stan, but it's, so to say an unreliable narrator is not the right way to call it. But when mm -hmm. he talks. You don't know whether or not he's full of shit sometimes, you know, because like he does contradict himself with stories. You call that out multiple times. Like there's an interview he's doing where he says it, and they're like, yeah, but you said you did this. That, that That's not true. And he doesn't even acknowledge it. And I think I remember that interview watching it. But it's it's just funny to see that like he doesn't he can't even keep the, the lies and, you know, like the kiss the kayfabe you know uh you know he can't keep mm -hmm. it together and i think that that's kind of interesting the way you you show that because like there are moments in his face where you'll see like he realizes something or he's like something else is going on inside his head than what he really portrays like he's he always exudes confidence in public but on the inside he's not you know and i think that that was that was pretty uh or it made, what made me laugh, you know, like watching that kind of like mm -hmm. interaction happen within the book. Yeah, that's um, like another comparison with um, the Jack Kirk with the story, you know, like um, the story of Jack Kirby and the story of Stan Lee is, um, yeah, there's not as many interviews, there's not as much footage of Jack Kirby, but Jack Kirby's interviews 
um, you know, sometimes he's a little hard to understand. He had the, like a certain way of speaking, a certain cadence that was, you know, not like the clearest communication, but his interviews were very deep. He was guarded at times like Stan and, and would posture, but he wasn't the expert at posturing and he wasn't as committed to posturing or maintaining a surface. So um, he was often like very frank, a lot of like, like there were, there was, it was just, you know, his, his were very genuine. You could really learn a lot from Jack Kirby's interviews where Stan's were kind it was kind of frustrating for me, you know, for somebody who's been interviewed so many times and there's to find like real substantive material and stories. And, and then it, it becomes like, okay, what's he not saying? It becomes more because that this, you can, you can, you start to see a pattern and like very specific outcomes that he wants to get or, or, um, you know, effects he wants to have on the person listen, the direct person listening to him in the room, or maybe people who might read it or see him on TV. And yeah, it's just, you know, really interesting. And it requires, um, I mean, that's, that's a really hard thing to, to communicate and get across. And so it does require like a little bit of, um, like acting, you know, like acting within cartooning, you know, when you're sort of, uh, you know, trying to show like, be, you're trying to show behavior uh, that the Kirby book had much more of sort of, um, it had, you know, like narration, it had like a big yellow chunk at the top of like most panels sort of, you know, Jack telling his story or, or you know, uh, information being conveyed. But there's, I think, I think maybe almost none of that in the Stan Lee book. It's mm -hmm. all behavior. It's all acting. It's all watch, you know, uh, seeing his behavior and, and, and he, quote unquote, hearing his words and kind of, uh, you know, the, the alchemy of that and, and, and trying to like figure out you know, exactly what's going on. Yeah, your approach is different. I mean, even the art style is different compared to, to the Kirby one. So how do you, okay, like the Kirby one, you definitely like the way Jack stood out was he was more of cartoony, right? Cartoony looking mm -hmm. in this world. How is your approach when you wanted to kind of switch it up? Because I think like, I mean, if you look at all your work, each project looks different. You don't, always draw exactly the same in each one you can see your art in it but it's always different so how is the approach in terms of artistically uh conveying this as opposed to the way you drew kirby yeah i mean again like kirby's style like his his sort of personal style his way of communicating was very different from stan's it was a little um a little more baroque a little more set i mean they're both from a different era but kirby's era seems like even further removed from our modern era than Stan's Kirby's, um, you know, much more of a classicist and, you know, and, and, and again, he, like he's an illustrator, he's, he's an artist. And so his world is going to be more Baroque. Stan is a guy who's quick on his feet, who's, uh, you know, a, a, an operator, like a mover and shaker kind of, you know, and, and a wordsmith, you know, and, and viewed himself as out of that sort of madman tradition like like that was a specific um reference for him like he knew those guys he he his office was on madison avenue and he saw himself as as like akin to those guys and so it was about you know making you know snappy patter um and office life and and it felt um even though the the story spans a lot of different eras um it felt like a very 1950s approach like or, or like the point where the 1950s become the 60s so sort of like late 50s early 60s and it felt like uh you know like i don't know hank ketchum like like dennis the menace era madman and so it was just like this the the writing style the the drawing style it just it, it just kind of naturally went there it just felt like a like a better fit for stan yeah it, you know it does it does move fast you know because you are spanning decades of of the yes. book. and i feel like i mean maybe I'm almost wrong. a century yeah i mean maybe i'm wrong but it feels a little thinner than the kirby book is this is it a little bit smaller or is it about the same i i think i think it's it's about the same page count i think they are pretty much the same page like may, maybe even exactly the same page count I, okay I, I, i'm not sure exactly but, but yeah they're pretty similar page count it's just again it's similar page count and then how much, you know, how much ground you have to cover between the sure. two. So, 
I know. I don't. Maybe I just read it fast because it, it doesn't it feel snappy, you know, like you're going through it because I read it in one sitting. I couldn't put the book down. I I mean, I just I mean, I, I, I was so excited to finally get a chance to read it. So, you know, I think that you talk about covering moments, right? And there's so many things about Stan that I think the entire world kind of understands about him and knows, even if you're not a comic book fan, I think just in terms of pop culture awareness, people know, right? I like that some of those aspects you quickly say, and then you kind of just, you get, you get past it in, in terms of like, you know, the story of, of Joan telling him, well, if you're going to, you know, they're going to close it down or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, just write the story you want to write. Like you just, you get through that. You don't really like spend too much time. It's the stuff around it that you kind of, kind of stretch out and spend a little more time on, which I appreciate as a fan. Cause like, if you know it, you're like, okay, well, I already know this kind of thing, but um, I do think that I don't know if I remembered this before, but you have that. And also, this is the perfect sister book to the to the Jack Kirby book because you're seeing the, the flip side of it. Right. You're seeing like it from Stan's mm -hmm. perspective. So that scene where he walks in on Jack and Joe and they're talking about working, <laughs> doing work at at, uh, mm -hmm. at National. And I was just like, man, what a little prick. You know, he just <laughs> stitched him out like he's just like in the office. Because I know that as a Kirby fan, I know for myself as a Kirby fan, when I see it, like, like it kind of annoys me. So, like, how do you kind of stay objective in that element? How do you separate yourself and your own opinions of situations? I I, I don't want to speak for you. I don't I don't know how you feel about it, but mm -hmm. I'm just gonna assume maybe it probably irritated you too. But how do you stay objective in that sense? Yeah, again, I I just I've kind of processed all of this stuff so long ago that if I had made this book maybe like when I was in my twenties, that, that would have been really, really hard to do. But, uh, cause you know, it, it might have, it was like maybe a hotter topic, you know, for me personally than now, but yeah, I just, I just have that, that perspective. And, and like, I understand, like, I, I understand, I, I can empathize with almost every character in this, but like, like I get it. And it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, um, make, anything that anybody does you know right or good i i just i and i i, I feel like as important as these uh things are to me and and as you know emotional and passionate as i can be about these things um i i think i'm also like um just very good at 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 just when i'm in you know creator mode or cartoonist mode or whatever i'm i'm pretty good at you know, taking a step back from everything and just looking at and 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 reporting reporting on 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 what I see. I I, I want to say too, like there's a, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I noticed it like towards more towards the end of the book, uh, maybe maybe middle to the end. The way Stan takes over conversations where he doesn't let you really talk much was that conscious, like the way you did that, like especially like the where, where you have him work when he's recording that like overkill with with Todd and Rob right yeah and, and how there's like no like Rob doesn't even talk in there and Todd has like a couple <laughs> balloons but it's like you just you just see like Stan's like word balloons like just completely take over the panels you yeah know? they become yeah they become like a physical presence like a, an imposing presence but again to me that is just uh, um that's just like honest reporting that's just sure. telling you know just just uh, telling it the way the way it is like those you know like that there there you you can you can watch those videos and you can see it kind of and and stan uh, so again like stan also he was so much more experienced um you know he put in so many more hours in that role as a spokesperson as being you know charming and engaging on camera or in front of an audience you know, who could, like, he could run circles around people, like, who could, who could really compete with him in that regards, particularly cartoonists, who are sort of, even, even very, uh, sort of vocal cartoonists, like that image generation, are still very, very um, introverted, when you sort of compare them to, like, the rest of, uh, the rest of society, but, but Stan is, so of course, he's going to run, uh, run rings, of course, if there's a lull, He's going to fill it. And, and I never saw like the, the one person who kind of went toe to toe with Stan and who the, like, at least on camera was Bob Kane. And, but they were also like 
pretty good friends. Uh, they were good friends, but like th you could tell part of their friendship was, you know, one upmanship and zinging each other and coming up with a good line. But still, I mean, Stan D is doing a lot of the same things that Bob Kane is doing, but he still, he comes out of it still seeming very charming, very funny, very engaging, where um, Bob Kane comes across as, as bitter because he just, he, he doesn't have the, he has the sort of forcefulness that Stan does, but he doesn't have the facility. He's, he's not light on his feet the way, the way Stan is. Yeah. Bob Kane's kind of douchey from, from what I've read <laughs> and what I've seen. I mean, yeah. even, even Bob Kane, like Bob Kane is a much more, you know, harder figure to kind of grapple with. But um, I feel like if I did a book about Bob Kane, I'd probably, you know, I'd come out the other end, you know, with with a different, you know, like a, a deeper perspective on on who he is. A lot of, I mean, these guys, they're all like the depression generation, you know, so they all, uh, you know, if, you know, if they're cantankerous or something, like you, you sort of, you can point to certain global things that might have uh, contributed to that. Yeah, I mean, it's a completely different generation. So, I mean, look, I I was born 87. So, like, yeah, there's a lot of this stuff I didn't experience. My mom didn't experience, you know, like she had me young. So it's 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 weird to see the, you know, the way people handle stuff then, you know, is the way they handle it now. And what was important to people then probably isn't the same as what is important to people now, you know, like in terms of like, you need mm -hmm. to be seen. You Like, and you didn't even mention too, like, the reason he did Stanley, you didn't, like, I mean, I've read stuff, I've seen stuff like where he didn't want to be known as a comic book writer. You don't address that. You don't address the fact that he didn't really grow up reading comics. So you don't like, I mean, because we've seen those types of interviews where he's like, oh, he didn't really love comics. He never really wanted to do it. He was embarrassed by it. You kind of a little bit when he's in that, I think he's yeah, at like a dinner. It's in there. A little yeah, bit. There's not a scene. There's maybe not a scene where he says, oh, comics, get these away from me or anything. Yeah. But you you see it in his behavior. There's some, you know, some of the parties he's at where he's doing everything he can to not mention uh, comics. And, you know, in his childhood that all the, you know, we see the different media he engages with and comics aren't there. Right, yeah. You know, that's, uh, and again, this is he and, and Kirby, like, uh, you know, they're there kind of pre-comics. Like Stan Lee, how, how would he have read a comic book when he's, in the office, you know, like, um, and, and Captain America number one's coming out. And so, you know, it's like, he's right there. At the, mm -hmm. So so how would he have grown up with comics and how, and, and then uh, I guess like the thing about his nom de plume, like, like that specific anecdote that he would tell about how, oh, I'm saving my name for, uh, you know, something literary. It's just like that, just some of his anecdotes were just uh, too much of a pill for me to swallow. <laughs> so some of them, <laughs> I, you know, uh, and, and and again, that is like, there are some really like ground in, like really just that have been drilled into our heads, certain stories that he's told that are just, um, you know, such complete fabrications that it's like, it's weird to do a Stan Lee book and not have, certain scenes in it but some of them i think are you know just just complete you know are fairy tales and and to actually show some of this stuff would have been you know like i like i thought would have been irresponsible some of some of the claims that he makes yeah you're just but i, I try, I try to reference as, as much of it as i can even you know even if i don't necessarily you know show certain like moments and and that one about the um the contest that he won and they kept begging him to, yeah. to to stop you know that that has been addressed and debunked and 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 so when i showed that i showed the the debunking of it yeah that's that's the scene where i was talking about where he's like he just mm -hmm. keeps going he just keeps talking it's like yeah. it doesn't even register in his head you know you know i do i do notice too like his circle of people is very small and like you convey that in a way that's not really overt in in the reader's face but he really doesn't have a large circle of friends you know it's people he works with and then his family and that's it and i think that that's also kind of interesting too because you would think that somebody like that would be you know i don't want to say popular but maybe like have a bigger circle of people that that is around him and that's 
definitely not the case here. It's definitely not the case in terms of stuff I've read. It's like him and Joan and then his daughter who, you know, eventually kind of, he has a weird relationship with towards the end. He, he had, he had like a circle of like superficial friendships in, in my opinion mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, um, he, he wanted to be part of like the social scene and go to parties and, and very um, sort of status conscious and, 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 you know, he had that, but yeah, and definitely as time went on, it really did. And his brother, Larry would be such a natural, like close friend and confidant. And I don't see any big obstacle to that in their life. I don't see any kind of, I don't know, like like the sort of things that keep siblings from being close, like any kind of, um, I don't know, substance abuse or, or, you know, any, like there's nothing like that. And it's just such a natural. And, and the fact that they, they weren't closer is like very strange. And you do get the impression that it's it's more Stan sort of closing Larry out. And I I, I get I mean it, it it feels like just very deep sibling rivalry kind of stuff from childhood that like I I think I think in, in a lot of ways Stan like never quite recovered from his childhood, even though like overtly there's 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 no um as far as we know, no great personal trauma that we can point to. I mean, the obvious exception being the depression and and and, and just, you know, uh, poverty and 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 how that affected him. But again, it's like he he really like Jack Kirby went through a war. Jack Kirby, you know, was involved in like gang fights and and gang wars and things. And Stan Lee's wartime experience is very different. His his uh, childhood, as far as we can tell, is very different. But Stan, you know, seems to be. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like he came out of his childhood unscathed. And and but but yeah, that the the way he sort of like fortifies himself, um, you know, with with like you say, a small circle and a small small family, and and I don't know. It, it feels very protective, like 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 almost like a fear of the world that that mm -hmm. obviously he doesn't project. Like, it, you know, he puffs out his chest and, and uh, you know, when 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 it's showtime, he's scared of nothing. But it does it does seem to me like somebody sort of building a wall to keep something out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, like you, you've said, a lot of this stuff is, is easy to find. But still, with all that being said, is there anything that you learned in your research that you didn't already know? Anything that kind of surprised you of learning about Stan? I mean, there's a, a lot of this stuff. I had a surface familiarity with a lot. And, and I guess the biggest, you know, the biggest like body of work or whatever, the biggest era that I learned the most about was, you know, what what was Stan Lee doing in those like in between years, you know, kind of like before Marvel, that kind of period of like the mid to late 40s up until like the mid to late fifties, this sort of like, you know, the comics, nobody talks about the comics, nobody reads the comics, nobody remembers. And then just, and a lot of the names and faces of, of, of the, the timely or Atlas or, you know, whatever you want to call it, the Marvel office of that time. Uh, it, a lot of that stuff was, was fresh and new to me and just seeing, seeing his role change because he does, you know, he, he there's different periods throughout his his life, even you know before the Marvel era, where he becomes like more involved in a creative sense, and then less involved in a creative sense, and then more involved, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of writing and things. So that it was a lot of fun getting to know that era and discovering a lot of you know comics and 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 some name, you know, getting getting to know better some some of the names and and faces of that era. Um, and then there's also like some of his like early attempts at broadening his media profile and things. And so I, I knew about the, the sort of pilot that he did for a TV show in, uh, in the, in the late sixties, you know, he shot this pilot and I'd seen some like bits and pieces of it, but I never like sat down and like watched the full thing, you know, multiple times and paying close attention to it. And that one was a real treat too. Cause it was like, it, it, it was very like transitional 
the period for for Stan because he's showing up with more of his like makeover look. So he is like very like it's almost like oh I'm 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 you know ready for my close up or whatever. Like it's like he's he's working on his image on his presentation, and then he's also like figuring out his tone. So he's got this very like intellectual t- like he's not as relaxed as we know him yet uh as we know him to become he's he's trying very hard to come across as like a sophisticate and an intellectual and not so much like an entertainer or a showman uh so it's and and, and he's a little little stiff a little bit mm-hmm. stiff uh still engaging but a little stiff and then he's also coming from like like a more conservative perspective like he thinks like you can tell in that show, he thinks that he's very progressive and open-minded and, and forward-thinking, but that's because he's spending time with uh, like his peers, you know, with people his age and people who are, you know, uh, work, you know, working in the offices of Manhattan. All of a sudden he's there with this new generation, sort of like the 60s generation of kids who are coming up, you know, uh, that you know that that are pretty much going to change popular culture. This this world that that he works in, and this this world that that he also helped to change. But uh, uh, they're 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 like running rings around him. They're they're mentioning issues and ways of viewing things that you can tell are just like news to him, you know. And then knowing Stan, like like knowing the path his life takes and the path his work takes. If you look at his work, you can see him folding that stuff into his approach to and and almost and not not necessarily having some kind of massive uh you know change of heart or or change of philosophy but just kind of like oh this is something that my my work or my presentation or my persona also needs to have so so that was that piece was was very very interesting and informative and and fun to watch yeah, I, I, it is interesting to watch his whole, like, because he is very different, you know, <laughs> what do I want to say, like, like, for you when he, like, fix, puts that wig on, you know, like, or the, the toupee, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Like, he definitely, there's a, a very stark difference in terms of the way he presents himself, and I think that that also comes across very well in the book. Is there anything that you wanted to include that, for sake of page count or anything that you needed to kind of trim out is anything that like let's say you did like a director's cut for instance is there any like lost pages like that that you had to kind of pull just for the sake of like helping the story to make have a more cohesive kind of flow to it yeah i mean there, you know there, there's 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 a ton of stuff again like i could still be working on that book <laughs> you know and i could work on it it was the same thing with jack kirby when i pitched jack kirby initially i was pitching it to comic book i wasn't pitching it to like traditional book publishers i was pitching it to comic book companies saying i want to make like a monthly or semi-monthly comic book of the life of jack kirby and like it could maybe run for a (laughs) hundred issues or 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 run indefinitely and and it just um that that was a tough sell that was like a much easier like the comic book companies said well how about just an all-in-one book instead of that and i'm like well you're the the reason i'm bringing like bringing this to you is because your comic book companies this is what you like and i would like to see this as a comic so you know i I had to change that approach and same thing with stan lee stan lee could be an ongoing comic book it's just there there is a market for here's the story of stan lee here's the story of jack kirby here's the story of whoever there's a market for that it's it remains to be seen if there's a market like market for an ongoing like that's maybe for somebody else to prove that oh no this is you know this is a business model or this is you know a way you can do it but that so yeah i mean it's the list is is never ending i mean just just one uh and, and then there's some things uh, that are maybe like too touchy that you have to kind of leave out or, or or you know and and also there's um there there's things that i you know really like believe to be true or or you know as far as i can tell makes sense but it's just like, like it, it, it would be too much of a stretch. To, like there's just not like a smoking gun or like a concrete, you know, so like those, and that's really, that's, that's the frustrating part of doing these biographies. Cause it's like, if I were doing the story of, you know, Schman Schme or something and like, just, you know, completely, you know, it's completely up to me how to tell a story, you know, and make an interesting story and an engaging story and, 
Like there's so many things I would put in the story of Schman Shmi that I just, I, I can't put in the story of Stan Lee. And so it's like, once, once you make that choice of like, okay, this is, uh, you know, and, and you look at, um, you know, Howard Chaikin's doing like a Hey Kids comics series and stuff where it's, it's all fictionalized. And so he can, he can tell it like really tell it the way he sees it, you know, yeah. and, and, and not, you know, pull any punches. But again, that's, you know, that's a different, that's a different uh, object. That's a, di that's a different business model. That's a different, that's, that's a different creative task. I guess, uh, you know, like the, how to draw comics the Marvel way is like, is like a really important book to me. And, and it just didn't, uh, you know, and me as an artist and stuff, and it, it didn't, it didn't quite make the cut, you know? And I, and I think a big, I think a big part of that is that it was like one of those projects where it was like, you know, this was, this was John Biasema's project, but to make it a little more salable or, or, you know, makes it, you know, sort of bring Stan in and, st and st like, it, it, you know, so that, that was part of the decision pro to, but again, it's like I could I could you know like you said a director's cut I could see a director's cut where there's some stuff about about um, you know how to make, how to draw comics the Marvel way it's just it didn't it didn't um, it didn't fit it didn't you know it every every page that you put in in a comic has to like pull its weight in somehow and that and that just wasn't pulling its weight you know com compared to other stuff but but yeah for me personally that's kind of a cool little bit yeah definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I think you did a great job. I think it's it's a it flows very well. Like you don't spend too much time in any one particular era or you know, any one particular moment, and you really get the full breadth of who Stan Lee is without feeling like you're one way or the other in Stan's camp. What you're not, you know, like you're not like Stan fanboy, but you're not like a, a Stan like hater either. You know, it's like a perfect mm -hmm. balance. Um, I ask you this with the Jack Kirby books. I want to ask you this with Stan. What? in your mind is one of your favorite Stanley comics, Stanley written comics. You know, uh, F Fantastic Four, number one. That's an easy one. That's an easy one to go. You know, it's just so important and so good too. And really um, they were, they were both like breaking uh, such, such new ground. And then the, um, uh, the, the, you know, the Galactus saga the, or the Galactus trilogy. That's so great too. But then there's that storyline that's like a little bit later where it's silver surfer and Dr. Doom meet each other and Dr. Doom steals silver surfer surfboard. I feel like that was like the, the pinnacle of Jack and Stan working together. They were both at the top of their game and they were both, you know, bringing their best, the, 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 you know, wordsmithing and, 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 and the writing and then the, the Jack's, you know, uh, visual storytelling, his artwork, his his writing, it just it it they're they're both s like doing such a great job, and it's harmonious, it's meshing, it's not the the two aren't competing with each other, the two are like going like hand in hand. So I th I think that would be my top just just in terms of just being this like phenomenal read and just a great uh, example of like oh here's what these guys do. The thing is, it's not one that we see reprinted very often, mm -hmm. you know, it's not because, um, you know, what we would see is like this man, this monster, which, it, which is pretty great and stuff. But uh, when, when you're presenting like the best of a person, uh, they tend to lean into things that are sort of one and done sort of complete little things. But I, I feel like uh, Stan Lee's work and Jack Kirby's work, their best work was, part of this like never ending saga, this never ending, uh, you know, soap opera. And so you take, like, I think their best work are these like snapshots where if you presented it to somebody who's, you know, the uninitiated, they'd be like, well, what was happening before this and what's going to happen after this? And it's like, no, that, that, that's, that's the beauty. Like that's, that's their sweet spot is right here. You don't need all that. Like you can imagine all that stuff and that's part of it, it too. So I, I'd say that again, I'm not good with pulling issue numbers out of the yeah. air. But whatever issue that when when the shit's like really 70 the or something, I think it's like like 60s or 70, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, but I know the one yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, I don't recall. I, I, yeah, I feel like it's a little bit. It might be a little before this. Like, I think it might be in like the 60s or so, like, you know, I feel like 70 might be. But but you could be right. I mean, again, again, I'm, I'm just so not good about the numbering. Yeah, so. I'm also not exact with with those early issues. Yeah. Like, it's hard for me unless it's like 
you know, like I guess you call them the key issues, like this Galactus Saga. Obviously, mm-hmm. I know which issues those are, but yeah, I, I know the story you're talking about. It's a great story. I, I totally agree. Before I let you go, we're talking Stan. We're talking Jack. I want to talk about that new Jack Kirby book that you're you're doing with Image, Jack Kirby Star Warriors: yeah. The Adventures of Adam Star and the Solar Legion. How did that come about? Because that kind of you yeah, came I mean, out of so- nowhere with that one. So yeah, it it did kind of come out of nowhere, and you know, if you're checking out my Patreon from time to time. I have a million projects sort of bubbling and simmering and, and I am Stan was one of those, you know, and then all these, all these projects are sort of competing for, you know, attention and resources and stuff, you know, with me, but yeah, with that one, that was, that was just one where I'd been doing a lot of these sort of remixes of old comics where, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like taking some, like taking like detective, con- like the first couple issues of Batman and then, playing around with it, you know, uh, redrawing and, and recomposing into like, you know, the kind of reading experience I'm looking for. Uh, I did it with Spider-Man. And so then this was one, and again, this came out of working on the Jack Kirby book and working on the Stan Lee book, spending a lot of time in that golden age era and looking at sort of like the lost gems and the, the, you know, the missing pieces and things. And that was one. And I was like, Oh, you know, this is such a great story with, um just this epic feel and the narration of it was just really great and the drawings but it just like for me as a reading experience it was just in that weird sort of golden age thing and especially with Kirby it's such an early story for Kirby so he hadn't quite figured out the rules of comics like nobody had figured out the rules of comics at that point yet so it's just this kind of weird like it's such a great story in there but I it it certainly wasn't apparent to me the first few times I read it you know, just kind of got glossed over. It's like, oh, that's a charming little thing from, from the olden days. But like having read it a bunch of times and spent time, I thought like, you know, if you just sort of extract these images and this verbiage and expand and give them room to breathe and stuff, this this could be like one of the all-time great Jack Kirby, you know, cosmic uh, adventure com- comics that you could put alongside, you know, the New Gods number seven and, and the Galactus trilogy and things like that. Um, but it's just it's just kind of this footnote at this point. So so I did that just just as this thing of like, I want to see what that looks like. What is that thing? And as I was working my way through, I thought, you know what? This is actually really good. And I'll bet I'm not the only person who'd be interested in this. And I'll bet Image would publish this. Like it just it just felt like something again, like they'd done sort of golden age kind of stuff. It just felt it, it, it you know, it felt so right for them. And it was public domain. Like when I did the Batman stuff and the Spider-Man stuff, that's not public domain. It's just stuff I can sort of do for my own entertainment. But um, this was public domain material. So there, there's really no barrier to publishing it. So I sent it to Image. I got the quickest thumbs up I'd ever gotten in my life. Like that's what, because again, a lot of these projects can, can you know, go. I never got one in the same day. I know I've had, I've had publishers tell me no the same day. I've never gotten a yes the same day so it was on so it it really like jumped to the front of the line and was ready to go and um you know i i got uh the the, the kirby estate involved I, I talked to lisa kirby and and you know we uh you know figured some stuff out and and um you know and so it's it's uh you know this you know this new this new old or old new jack kirby comic that's going to be coming out in september yeah, I'm super stoked for it. When it was announced, because like I said, I was not expecting this. And I, I mean, that cover alone, just like, I was like, yes, I need this. You know, I can't wait to to see what Tom's doing again. Uh, well, I, I'm super stoked for it. I love this. Like I said, love the Stanley book. I can't say enough good stuff about it. I, I know that I know that most people hate hearing this question because like they want to let their current work breathe. But are you working on anything uh, currently? I'm always working on stuff. I work on a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not working on anything where it's like, uh, you know, like a publisher or something is like, okay, you know, like I'm not working on it the way I was working on, you know, Stan Lee Mm -hmm. a year ago or something. Yeah, I'm working on a bunch of things. Um, One of them is uh, this, um, it's like, like I do the Total Recall Show uh, YouTube channel. And uh, sometimes me and Matt, uh, my my co-host on there, sometimes we just kind of bat ideas back and forth, you know, of, of things. And so this is like the first one that I've kind of, you know, started kind of putting out there on my Patreon and on, uh, on uh, you know, Instagram and stuff. 
is uh, this story, this thing we're calling Supercar, you know, like an 80s style, uh, you know, guy in his talking car adventure kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know. And um, it's it's been a lot of fun, and there's there's like a lot of cool stuff coming up from it. So like working working on that. Who knows what it you know what that'll end up be? I could see it being a comic book. I could see it being, you know, an animated. I could see it being a, a live action thing or whatever. But that's 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 something that's out there. Also, um, I have this this uh, superhero I've been working on called Witch Man, and again, just spending all this time in the golden age working on these projects made me like really really want to make golden age comics or, or like n what I think of as new golden age comics. Um, I was calling them new golden age comics for a while. And then I saw uh, DC recently started calling their stuff, new golden age. I mean, I, you know, parallel thinking or whatever, but, uh, but I was doing it first, but uh, like, I, that's, that was my concept was this sort of like new golden age. So sort of like the, the, the look and feel and style and approach of the golden age, but you know, very, also very, you know, 2023. And so Witch Man's one of those. He's kind of this like dark adventure of the night. And I did another one a couple of years back that was kind of in that vein too, called Young Zeus. Again, just wanting to yeah. like make like an, a golden age comic with modern with modern sensibilities. So those are some those are some ones that come to mind. I'm also working on a a a, a pitch for sort of not necessarily comic books, but sort of that graphic novel space or that that like traditional publisher space, which. Uh, Jack Kirby came out, the Jack Kirby book came out of, and I Am Stan came out of, uh, where I'm, uh, a sequel to Pride and, uh, not Pride and Prejudice, a sequel uh, to The Scarlet Letter, like The Scarlet Letter 2, which is basically the, the the working title of that. So that's something, and, and I've put a lot of that, that's, I put a lot of that on my Patreon and stuff, and so I'm kind of picking away at that. All right, cool. Yeah, man, I'm excited for all that stuff. I, I can't wait to see what what you got working. Would you ever do another uh, biography, or you think you think you're good with uh, the Stan and Jack kind of bookends? I mean, I feel like I need a break. Like, I, like it's <laughs> uh, it's really hard. Like, it's yeah. it's it's harder than it's harder than the other stuff. It's it's very rewarding, and and those uh, were both the uh, uh, Jack Kirby, the Epic Life, and I Am Stan were both sort of like life changing works for me. Like I, I really had a lot of fun working on them, but yeah, like it's like you take a breath and it's like, Oh, do I really feel like doing the next one? But I mean, I, you know, I, I could do another one. I feel, I feel like there's another, maybe, maybe it's my next book. Maybe it's not my next book, but I feel like, you know, probably got a couple more of those in me. All right, cool, man. Well, I'm excited for everything you got coming up. I want to thank you again for uh, taking time to chat with me. I always love talking comics with you. Um, I will drop the links for all your social media down below, link to your Patreon so people can uh, jump on that. And uh, yeah, dude, I'd really love to do this with you again sometime. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. It's been a pleasure. I enjoyed it last time. I enjoyed it this time. And yeah, I look forward to doing it again awesome. sometime.